And now chapter 23, the demigods regain the heavenly planets. Shukdev Goswami said, When the Supreme, Ancient, Eternal Personality of Godhead had thus spoken to Bali Maharaj, who is universally accepted as a pure devotee of the Lord, and therefore a great soul, Bali Maharaj, his eyes filled with tears, his hands folded, and his voice faltering in devotional ecstasy, responded as follows. Bali Maharaj said, what a wonderful effect there is in even attempting to offer respectful obeisances to you. I merely endeavored to offer you obeisances, but nonetheless, the attempt was as successful as those of pure devotees. The causeless mercy you have shown to me, a fallen demon, was never achieved even by the demigods or the leaders of the various planets. After speaking in this way, Bali Maharaj offered his obeisances first to the Supreme Personality of Godhead Hari and then to Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva. Thus he was released from the bondage of the Naga Pasha or the ropes of Aruna and in full satisfaction he entered the planet known as Sutala. Thus having delivered the proprietorship of the heavenly planets to Indra and having fulfilled the desire of Aditi, mother of the demigods, the Supreme Personality of Godhead ruled the affairs of the universe. When Prahlad Maharaj heard how Bali Maharaj, his grandson and descendant, had been released from bondage and had achieved the benediction of the Lord, he spoke as follows in a tone of greatly ecstatic devotion. O Supreme Personality of Godhead, you are universally worshipped. Even Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva worship your lotus feet. Yet, although you are such a great personality, you have kindly promised to protect us, the demons. I think that such kindness has never been achieved even by Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, or the Goddess of Fortune Lakshmi, what to speak of other demigods or common people. O Supreme Shelter of Everyone, Great personalities like Brahma enjoy their perfection simply by tasting the honey of rendering service at your lotus feet. But as for us, who are all rogues and debauchees born of an envious family of demons, how have we received your mercy? It has been possible only because your mercy is causeless. O oh my Lord, your pastimes are all wonderfully performed by your inconceivable spiritual energy. And by her perverted reflection, the material energy, you have created all the universes. As the super soul of all living entities, you are aware of everything, and therefore you are certainly equal toward everyone. Nonetheless, you favor your devotees. This is not partiality, however, for your characteristic is just like that of a desire tree, which yields everything according to one's desire. My dear son Prahlad, all good fortune unto you. For the time being, please go to the place known as Sutala, and there enjoy happiness with your grandson and your other relatives and friends. You shall be able to see me there in my usual feature with conch shell, disc, club, and lotus in my hand. Because of your transcendental bliss due to always personally seeing me, you will have no further bondage to fruit of activities.
Accompanied by Bali Maharaj, my dear King Pariksit, Prahlad Maharaj, the master of all the chiefs of the demons, took the Supreme Lord's order on his head with folded hands. After saying yes to the Lord, circumambulating Him and offering Him respectful obeisances, He entered the lower planetary system known as Sutala. Hadi, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Narayan, thereafter addressed Shukracharya, who was sitting nearby in the midst of the assembly with the priests. O Maharaj Pariksit, these priests were all Brahma bodies, followers of the Vedic principles for performing sacrifices. The Lord said, O best of the Brahmins, Shukracharya, please describe the fault or discrepancy in your disciple Bali Maharaj who engaged in performing sacrifices. This fault will be nullified when judged in the presence of qualified Brahmins. My Lord, you are the enjoyer and lawgiver in all performances of sacrifice, and you are the Yagya Purusha, the person to whom all sacrifices are offered. If one has fully satisfied you, where is the chance of discrepancies or faults in his performances of sacrifice? There may be discrepancies in pronouncing the mantras and observing the regulative principles, and moreover there may be discrepancies in regard to time, place, person, and paraphernalia. But when your lordship's holy name is chanted, <laughs> everything becomes faultless. Lord Vishnu, I must nonetheless act in obedience to your order because obeying your order is most auspicious and is the first duty of everyone. In this way, the most powerful Shukracharya accepted the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead with full respect. Along with the best Brahmins, he began to compensate for the discrepancies in the sacrifices performed by Bali Maharaj. O King Pariksit, thus having taken all the land of Bali Maharaj by begging, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Vamanadev, delivered to his brother Indra all the land taken away by Indra's enemy. Lord Brahma, the master of King Daksha and all other Prajapatis, accompanied by all the demigods, the great saintly persons, the inhabitants of Pitraloka, the Manus, the Munis, and such leaders as Daksha, Brigu, and Angira, as well as Kartikeya and Lord Shiva, accepted Lord Vamanadev as the protector of everyone. He did this for the pleasure of Kashyapa Muni and his wife Aditi, and for the welfare of all the inhabitants of the universe, including their various leaders. O King Pariksit, Indra was considered the king of all the universe, but the demigods, headed by Lord Brahma, wanted Upendra, Lord Vamanadev, as the protector of the Vedas, the principles of religion, fame, opulence, auspiciousness, vows, elevation to the higher planetary system, and liberation. Thus they accepted Upendra, Lord Vamanadev, as the supreme master of everything. This decision made all living entities extremely happy. Thereafter, along with all the leaders of the heavenly planets, Indra, the king of heaven, placed Lord Vamanadev before him and, with the approval of Lord Brahma, brought him to the heavenly planet in a celestial airplane. Indra, king of heaven, being protected by the arms of Vamanadev, the supreme personality of Godhead, thus regained his rule of the three worlds and was reinstated in his own position, supremely opulent, fearless, and fully satisfied. Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, Lord Kartikeya, the great sage Brigu, other saintly persons, the inhabitants of Pitraloka, and all other living entities present, including the inhabitants of Siddhaloka and living entities who travel in outer space by airplane, all glorified the uncommon activities of Lord Vamanadev. O King, while chanting about and glorifying the Lord, they returned to their respective heavenly planets. They also praised the position of Aditi. O Maharaj Pariksit, pleasure of your dynasty, I have now described to you everything about the wonderful activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vamanadev.
Those who hear about this are certainly freed from all the results of sinful activities. One who is subject to death cannot measure the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Trivikram, Lord Vishnu, any more than he can count the number of atoms on the entire planet Earth. No one, whether born already or destined to take birth, is able to do this. This has been sung by the great sage Vasishta. If one hears about the uncommon activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his various incarnations, he is certainly elevated to the higher planetary system or even brought back home, back to Godhead. Whenever the activities of Vamanadev are described in the course of a ritualistic ceremony, whether the ceremony be performed to please the demigods, to please one's forefathers in Pitraloka, or to celebrate a social event like a marriage, that ceremony should be understood to be extremely auspicious. <laughs> Thus ends the 23rd chapter of the 8th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled, The Demigods Regain the Heavenly Planets.